Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elizabeth George, and I'm so delighted to have you here today for our chapter leader town hall meeting. Um, this is an opportunity for us to have a give and take. We want to hear how you're doing, and we have a lot of wonderful, exciting things to share with you. So uh, you'll be hearing from James Thomas Shower today, our executive director, and Joshua Freeman, our chief technology officer, and Molly Davey, who is also in membership with me, is going to be there. Uh, so we want this to be interactive, and uh, all of us will be doing a brief presentation, but we don't want to be talking to you. I have a couple of polls that I'm going to ask you to participate in, and as we go along, if you have questions, please post them in the q and I'm going to be monitoring that. Molly's going to be monitoring that, and we don't want to wait till the very end uh, to answer questions. We want to answer them as the presentations are going along. So, uh, and as well as you know, this is being recorded, so it will be uploaded probably by tomorrow at this time on the website, and I'll send out a link to everyone. So without that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our Chief Executive Officer, James E. Thomashauer. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Uh, wonderful to be with you all on a town hall meeting. Uh, and thank you, Elizabeth, for, for creating these town hall meetings for us. We used to have them years ago, but not on Zoom. Now we're able to have them on Zoom through the magic of the internet. So thank you for doing that. And for those of you who are uh, able to join us right on time, I get to break some wonderful news uh, to you. So the, our breaking news is that I have promoted Elizabeth George to be our chief membership officer. So effective immediately, Elizabeth George is now our chief membership officer. And uh, I, she knew I was gonna say this, so it's no great shock, but congratulations, Elizabeth, uh, on your new title and new responsibility. Well-earned, well-deserved. So we are all excited to uh, have you as our CMO, our Chief Membership Officer. Thank you, James. Uh, you're most welcome. Uh, our purpose here, my purpose here on this uh, town hall meeting is to talk to you about our new strategic plan. So let me put it up on the screen uh, and get going with it. Um, this is our second strategic plan. This is a strengthening plan. And the first strategic plan was a 2018 to 2021 plan. We um, searched hard and high and low for the right planners. We began that search in 2017, in January of 2017. We received our first proposals uh, from a number of different uh, planners, including Elizabeth Bailey of 2B Communications. And we ended up engaging 2B uh, in 2017, and they created that first plan, which was for 2018 to 2021. They know us pretty well after working with us now for about three and a half years. So now we're into our second plan, 2021, 2024, honoring our traditions and envisioning our future. The planning steps are shown here. I'm not gonna read all this material, but suffice to say more than 5,100 AGO members and 200 chapters share their ideas and their feedback via surveys that 2B Communications created and, uh, and instituted and reviewed with great thoroughness. Uh, there were planning sessions, planning refinement. They involved uh, a national council, strategic planning committee, the staff, an in-person session with the national council and then feedback and refinement steps after each of the planning sessions. Finally, the national council approved the plan on August 26, 2021. This is a soft launch, ladies and gentlemen, we have not made a formal launch of the new plan, but you're getting sort of a early peek at it uh, as we uh, get ready to make a more formal announcement about the strategic plan. Our, our fiscal year started September 1, uh, and so this new plan is really effective September 1, 2021. The plan is guided by our mission and vision. The vision of the AGO is to engage, support, and uplift every organist. I try to memorize this with the, with the alphabet, E, S, and U in that sequence. Engage, support, and uplift every organist. And then the mission of the AGO is to foster a thriving community of musicians who share their knowledge and inspire passion for the organ. Good things to memorize if you can. Our vision, and to live by, our vision, every organist, we're trying to reach every organist, and of course, our mission. The overarching aims, what are we trying to achieve with this strategic plan? What are our big goals? The big goal is to attract and retain members who play and appreciate the organ. 
right? I mean, that's overarching stuff. We're trying to attract and retain the members who play and appreciate the organ. We had a little discussion with the regional counselors uh, about this yesterday, and some it was suggested that we might want to put in choral directors as well. Well, no question, we want to attract and retain members who are choral directors. Uh, but our first primary goal here is still the organ. Welcome and include organists of all ages, all races, all religions, who play all types of instruments at all skill levels. We are as inclusive as there can be, as, as we can be, that's our goal. Provide a valuable, engaging and meaningful experience to all AGO members. Feature and recognize a diverse range of organists, instruments, composers, and musical genres, which we do in our conventions. Support and strengthen the AGO's chapters. Vital, absolutely vital. It was in the first plan, it's vital in the second plan. It's all about strengthening the AGO's chapters and maximize the AGO's organizational effectiveness and ensure its long-term sustainability. And indeed, by creating this new structure, we'll talk about it in a minute some more, but uh, with Elizabeth George as our chief membership officer and Josh Freeman as our chief technology officer, we are changing our organizational structure to be more effective for the long term. All right, the strategic plan is basically set out into three components. There's a component for chapters and community. There's a component for education and recognition. And there's a component for organizational capacity and effectiveness. So let's start with the chapters and community component because once again, chapters are our lifeblood. Help chapters of all sizes function effectively. The key, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Key strategies and continue to develop practical training and resources for chapter leaders, including tools explicitly geared to leaders of the smallest chapters. You know, the bigger chapters, they have their uh, uh, tools available to them and they're better able to uh, orient the new people as they come in. Not so, not so easy for the smaller chapters and we recognize that. Help small and or struggling chapters identify and pursue their most viable path forward. And some of those paths may include creating a community locally as opposed to uh, a chapter. So we're not looking to disband any chapters. We don't think that's a viable path. We're looking to keep the members of a chapter together, even if it means not necessarily being in the in a form of a chapter, which requires uh, IRS reporting and AGO bylaws compliance and so on. Provide programming that is suitable for chapter use. So national needs to do more to provide programming for the chapters. Update and roll out customizable member recruitment and onboarding programs. Again, let's help the smaller chapters in particular with member recruitment and onboarding programs. Refine and fully implement a national chapter support program involving headquarters, RCs, and potentially the DCs. Once again, the whole focus here is to help chapters of all sizes function effectively. And to that extent, we're going to be developing a national chapter support program. Elizabeth George is gonna be a key player in doing that uh, uh, development. Establish a formal process for regularly gathering chapter insights and benchmark data. So we have to see what's going on and make sure we're on the right path, gather data, adjust our program as we go. Another main goal, assist members with creating shared interest groups. And to that end, design and implement a pilot program to enable members to form in-person or virtual shared interest groups. Well, this is not just the community that we're talking about. If a chapter, for example, can not hold together as a chapter, we hope that it can, but if it has difficulties doing that, uh, that's an interest group, a shared interest group that we could develop. But also there may be shared interest groups for people, guild members who want to who just love Vierne and want to talk about Vierne and, and have comments about Vierne or fingering of Bach or uh, theater organists in, within the AGO. And this is going to be helpful for us, not only for our current membership, but potentially to bring in new members who want to be part of these groups. So this is also a membership recruitment tool to develop these uh, new uh, different ways of enabling members to form in-person or virtual shared interest groups. Those definitely start with members. We might expand that to prospective members as well to let people in and get them excited to join the guild. Invest in the next generation of organists. Well, that's what YoYo is about, the year of the young organists. And I say it proudly, expand efforts to connect with middle school, high school and college level organists and musicians. That's what we're doing right now with the year of the young organists. And we were just, you know, about what, four or five months in. That started July 1, basically. July, August, September, October. We're less than four months in. And eight more months to go with the Year of the Young Organist with a free membership for everyone under the age of 30, middle school, high school, and college level organists and musicians included. And we hope you will 
Make sure everybody that you know who's got a young person in their life who cares about the organ is aware that they can get a free membership in the guild. Let's do this. Support programming aimed at attracting and retaining young organist members, including scholarships and other financial assistance uh, and access to practice instruments. So we recognize that a lot of times young people can't, don't have the financial means or have access to instruments. Those are two critical areas. And we wanna make sure that all young people can uh, do those things. Let's move ahead. Uh, help chapters of all sizes uh, function effectively. Continue to develop practical training and resources for chapter leaders, including tools explicitly geared to leaders of small chapters. Help small and or struggling chapters identify and pursue their most viable path. Provide programming that is suitable for chapter use. And update and roll out customizable member recruitment and onboarding programs. All right. Step fully, refine and fully implement the National Chapter Support Program and the Chapter Insights. I wonder if I went backwards by mistake on that. Let's see, seven. Yeah, I think I did by accident. My apologies. We left out this one. Enhance uh, pipe organ encounters and young organists, increase opportunities for young organists to serve in leadership roles on our committees and on our task forces. We have to be doing this. All right. Let's go on to education and recognition. Understand and meet the educational needs of organists wherever they are. We have to meet our members where they are at all skill levels and at all career stages. Evaluate and update and or sunset existing education and skill building offerings. We can't just keep everything forever. You know, sometimes you have to sunset programs that just aren't working. Continue to evolve and provide exceptional programming at national and regional conventions and increase access. Uh, for our people, uh, exploring, providing more scholarships and expand streaming. That is explicitly here in our, in our strategic plan to expand streaming. So when we talk about streaming of our uh, national conventions and regional conventions, that's what we're referring to. And create additional resources focused on career path support. Also in the education and recognition area. Ensure that certifications continue to inspire organists to strive for excellence. I spent time on the phone today with Vince Carr, the counselor for, profession, for education, and his committee, the Committee on Professional Certification, met for a couple of days in India, Indiana. Uh, I believe they were in Indianapolis over this past weekend, focusing on the certification program. Uh, this key strategy, conduct a thorough review of the AGO's current certifications and identify areas for improvement in content, exam preparation, providing materials for exam prep to candidates, and the exam processes themselves. Implement a plan to enhance the program, including expanding certification preparation offerings. That's about preparation. You know, one of the major questions we always ask about the certification program is, are we asking the right questions? At each level of the certification program, service playing and colleague and associateship and the fellowship and choir master, are each of these certification examinations asking the, exactly the right questions? How do we know? Are we asking questions just to demonstrate some great educational massive knowledge or to demonstrate some ability to perform in church, to play in church? Should these exams be more tied to actual performance requirements during worship? Or is it sufficient that they be tied more to understanding the, the, the educational aspects, the pedagogical aspects uh, of the uh, of organ playing? organ history and so on. These are important questions we have to ask and we have to answer properly. Let's go on to the competitions. Uh, we need to uh, achieve greater impact and visibility with our competitions. One of the ways we're going to accomplish that, we believe is if we have more funding and, and are able to provide greater first place, second place, third place prizes for our competition winners. Identify opportunities to elevate the AGO's competitions, including increasing the prize money and ensuring that high standards are rewarded. Evaluate the current competitions. You know, we have about six of them, right? We've got NIACOP and we have the Rising Stars, Riccio competitions and NCOI. So these are major performance competitions. We have composition competitions. Uh, we have the ECS, we have the Marilyn Mason and we have a Pogazelski Yankee annual composition competition. So we have three composition competitions, three performance competitions. Uh, Evaluate them, make strategic adjustments if warranted, forge new alliances to expand reach and to uh, share resources. 
All right, now we're on to organizational capacity and organizational effectiveness, a big one. Consistently deliver a purposeful, there's our big goal, a purposeful and achievable volunteer experience. So to do that, we wanna conduct systematic reviews and re redefine the volunteer roles as needed. This is big. Are the roles of the regional counselors correct as they are defined? Are the roles of the district conveners appropriate? Uh, do we still need to keep the district conveners or in their current roles in some capacity? If we have the right number of district conveners, we have the right number of regions. We probably won't go back to that. We reduced it from nine to seven. I doubt that we'll review that. Uh, but updating and or creating volunteer structures, job descriptions, and the transition processes. These are all part of our key strategies to make sure that we can consistently deliver a purposeful and achievable volunteer experience. Review and update volunteer recruitment application and selection processes at all levels. Prepare and implement a sustained volunteer leadership training program that includes in-person and online components and easily accessible resources. So this is all about helping strengthen the roles and the responsibilities of the volunteers with leadership training. We need to do more leadership training. Kudos to Elizabeth George, who has been focusing on that since she arrived with leadership training webinars and the in-person ones we had most recently in 2020 in uh, California, in Southern California. Another organizational capacity and effectiveness goal, significantly expand the AGO's technological and marketing communications capacity. We're gonna move over to Josh Freeman in just a few min minutes, our chief technology officer, uh, who is here to expand our technological capacity. That's why Josh is on board. That's why we created the chief technology officer position to get the, give the AGO a kick up, uh, if you will, to get into a higher level of technological capability. And marketing communications. We don't have a marketing and communications function per se in the guild. What's that about? We need to have one. So we have a job description developed already for a marketing and communications person to raise up the profile of the American Guild of Organists so that people know who the AGO is, and what the AGO stands for, so that people know more about our competitions to market the membership recruitment, to market all aspects of our activity, our pipe organ encounters, to organize communication strategically, to, org to look at our social media platforms of which there are many and get a handle on, get a strategy around our social media platforms and implement the strategy, get a strategy behind our communications programs and implement the strategy. We wanna create, so here we go, complete the, oh, the AMS, <laughs> complete the implementation of a new association management system. That's the big database that keeps track of everything and everybody, basically everybody and what they do and the website. Ah, I think we skipped ahead. Uh, Let's see. Oh, wrong way. All right, implementation of a new AMS website, including CMS integration uh, and a texting platform. So uh, create centralized and accessible online repository for documents so, so leaders can find the documents more easily, including our national council members. Expand technology support to chapters, develop a longer range technology plan encompassing the AGO's holistic needs, including privacy and security. Cybersecurity is a big deal. Here are our marketing and communication strategies. Ensure that the newly selected TAO editor supports and works collaboratively with AGO staff and volunteer leaders to maximize TAO's relevance to all members. So I would say continues to support and work collaboratively with AGO staff and volunteer leaders. Um, I was speaking with one candidate for TAO editor, Todd Sicily is moving on. And uh, she asked me, what does the AGO do to market TAO? And I said, not enough. And what does the AGO do to market th the AGO? I said, not enough. So uh, that's where that marketing comes in. She was asking me that questions, that, that uh, candidate. Acquire the knowledge and skills required to develop and execute a robust multi-channel marketing communications program that supports all aspects of the AGO, including website, social media and other communications, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, got to get our arms around all of these different social media platforms and get organized around how we're going to use them. Formalize our messaging strategy and increase proactive public relations. It's a big job. Tony Thurman has done a beautiful job for many, many years as director of development and communications 
Uh, Tony is now chief development officer. We're, we're moving the communications piece out of Tony's portfolio and into a new person's portfolio. Gonna finish up here, increase funding, fundraising, speaking of development, to further strengthen the AGO's finances and ability to fill its, fulfill its mission uh, with a well-rounded development program and it, make sure we ensure that sufficient time and resources dedicated to fundraising. So we need to give Tony more support. He does a beautiful job, but he needs even more support. Align AGO operations with association norms and best practices. We will review our membership categories and structure. Maybe we need to have an organizational membership as Elizabeth George has been recommending since she walked in the door. Why don't we have an organizational membership? Interesting idea, we've never had one, maybe it's time. Establish a formal human resource function. Oh yes, we're doing that. Working with an outside firm to do it and it's helped, they're helping me a ton. Evaluate our office space needs since we're, a lot of us are working remotely, including yours truly at the moment and create accountability uh, and collaboration for strategic plan implementation among the National Council and staff by adopting consistent and defined annual action planning and progress check-in processes. And with that, uh, I think we have con concluded and I'm going to uh, stop sharing. Uh, I guess we can take questions or we can go to Josh. We do have some questions. We do indeed. Um, Molly, I don't know. Jane, do you feel like, would you like to ask your question out loud or are you happy for me to read it? Molly, can you unmute Jane? You, uh, Jane on? You can go ahead and ask my question, no problem. <laughs> Okay. Well, Jen, talk more about career path support. What does that mean? What would it look like? Oh, that's a great question. So we have our new document uh, that we put out actually just at the very end of 2020 on employing, relig um, employing musicians in religious institutions. So that document uh, about which we've had a couple of webinars and we have more to come, and I'm going to just hold it up on my screen. Uh, this is the one. So this is what we're talking about when we say help uh, our members with career support. There's, there's lots of information here. This is, as it says on here, it's a handbook for committees and candidates, meaning individuals, to help um, individuals better uh, negotiate salaries, for example. We can't provide salary charts, but we can help teach candidates how to be better at uh, self-supporting their own efforts to find jobs, to negotiate appropriate salaries for them and so on. Uh, we have another webinar to come on this particular booklet. We have more such booklets and resources to come that will be designed specifically to help our members uh, in their career paths. And we want to, we'd like to hear from you as to how we can do that, what, what resources you would like. I can't provide a salary guideline, I'm sorry, FTC says no, but we can do lots of other things that, that will help our members in their job searches and job and career paths. Oh, great. Okay, we have a question from Pete Townsend. Uh, Pete, you are unmuted if you'd like to uh, ask your question. I he think you can like, unmute. Can we unmute him? He looks muted to me. He does indeed. All right. Well, uh, Pete actually asked a very good question. Are there any specific examples of programs that should be considered for Sunset? Uh, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of the AGO National Council on this one. So <laughs> yes, the answer is yes, but I don't feel at liberty to uh, kind of go there uh, right now. You know, um, it's it, here's here's a program that there are programs that we've had over the years that we simply haven't pursued for numbers of reasons. For example, uh, we had a uh, program that was developed years ago in the educational realm to get into the schools, the combinations of teachers who could teach science and music and uh, history and social science and talk about the whole history of the organ very holistically from both from, from the sciences and, and music and so on. And it never took off. Uh, and so we stopped promoting it because it simply wasn't any, any program. It was, it was a nice educational program. And in fact, I've just spent time with the Royal College of Organists because they're interested in it, telling them about it. But it was not a program that took off. So that's a kind of an educational program, just as an example, that we've let go. We have start, stopped promoting it. Um, there, there may be others. I'm not anticipating any competitions that we're going to let go of. I'm not in, anticipating any certification programs that we're going to let go of. Uh, but there may be others more on the fringes of some of the uh, National Council Committee portfolios that will be looked at. One more question, 
And Ludo, we can unmute you if you would like to post your question. Uh, Molly can do that. If not, I'm happy to, uh, to ask it on behalf of you. Am I, am I unmuted now? Yes, you are. Yeah, my question was uh, maybe my background. I'm coming out of the automotive industry. I work for uh, a shareholder based in Seattle. Uh, so US based and we had in our companies or company structure a lot of positions where we had a strong succession planning so knowing who will be the next in the position and that's sometimes very critical uh, to have a smoothly transition if somebody leaves or some, somebody re gets retired or whatever so that you are prepared in your organization maybe that should be also one of the good ideas to integrate in the strategic planning it is, it is Ludo, that's a terrific question. Starting with me, because any number of people have, have said to me, James, we need to do some succession planning for you. Not that I'm planning to go anywhere or retire, but uh, you know, that has, has come up for a couple of years now that succession planning you know, needs to start with the top. And so that's certainly um, on people's minds, on some people's minds, not so much mine, but maybe on some other people's minds, but even in, in the chapters uh, where succession planning is, is helpful for deans, and for those who might have been treasurer for 15 years, because sometimes the treasurer stays on for a long time. Succession planning is important, Ludo, at every level of the organization. Uh, yeah. The national nominee, I'm sorry? In, in the uh, European AGO, we have some members in our board who don't have a function, but they are member at, at last. So they are, yeah, we, we take them on board and they follow the, the meetings and maybe they are the successors of the, the ones who have, not, have now a formal position. Yeah. That's a great best practice to use your members at large as a building your leadership pipeline so that they can move into officer positions. That's awesome. And we're so delighted you joined us. It's it's late where you are, but thank oh, you so much. It's, it's, great uh, to it's early. early. It's 10 30. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. We have a couple more questions. Um, can you please talk a bit about metrics, measures, and specific strategies for meeting the goals that were presented? How will we know when we've met these goals? Is this part of the planning is still in progress? It is. We have to develop the metrics and the goals. We have membership. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of an easy way to develop the goals. We get a membership dashboard. I imagine that any number of you see the membership dashboard that Elizabeth George uh, sends out that has been created by Leah Semekin in the past and Molly Davies uh, keeping it up now with all sorts of metrics on the memberships, uh, membership numbers for all, all of our different categories of membership. So that's a, kind of an obvious one since retaining, recruiting and retaining members is important. Uh, but we keep track of the number of chapters we have. And uh, you know, there's a, <laughs> we, we keep track of, um, of course, the financial numbers are very important as well. We would like every, every chapter to send in uh, a, a budget and let us take a look and have a, have a, you know, a see at it to see how you're doing. But that's another metric. Um, how are you doing organizationally at the chapter level in terms of bringing in young members? There's a, there's a competition that, that Elizabeth George has uh, created to give an award to the chapters that bring in the net greatest number of, of new members. I say net, you know, net of ones that you might lose. So um, these are all part of, the, part of the metrics we're talking about. Uh, do we want to drill down and, and get into the level of how many programs you're having and, and how many members are involved in your programs? What percentage of the members are involved in your programs? You know, potentially we could do that, but that's all part of future planning. Um, as well, we have another question here. I would like to see guidelines of what a full-time job consists of, or what a half-time job looks like, how many hours are involved. You need to read that wonderful guidebook that's on our website, right, James? That, that has been created that talks about this so right. much. Kathleen Thiesen, so, yeah. It, it has all the different components. Uh, it's free. It's available for everybody. For free download for anybody and everybody. And it's on our website, Employing Musicians in Religious Institutions. Every church setting is going to be a little different. So a full-time job in one church may look a lot different than a full-time job in another church or a half-time job, you know, from church to church and region to region, a large city to small city, they all might look, uh, or rural or uh, suburbs, you know, everything's gonna look a little different. Denominations are different. There's no one size fits all here. So we have a terrific compilation of the different responsibilities and tasks 
that an organist might do and in any given setting. And we think that's a pretty comprehensive list, as a matter of fact. We think we've certainly caught 95% of all the most important things that an organist has to do. How, the, how many hours of each is uh, unique, I think, to the particular setting of the church. But please do uh, look at these appendices, for example, in the back of this book. I think you'll find it extremely helpful. Okay, we're gonna take one more question from Adam. Um, if you wanna unmute yourself, Adam, you can, or I'm happy to read it. Have we thought, and this is Adam Graham. Do you wanna unmute yourself? You, you can go ahead and do that if you'd like to. Sure. Um, I hope my fan isn't bothering me in the background, but I was wondering about initiatives or any sort of partnership with the um, Piano Teachers Association or even the American Choral Directors Association in regards to um, new or younger members. At the moment, none, but this is uh, absolutely in the talking stages. So we talk all that we talk, talk, talk is cheap, you know, but we talk about ways that we can begin to uh, establish relationships with these other organizations in those particular areas. So particularly the piano teachers, uh, I was on a conversation with the regional councils yesterday in which this exact topic came up. ACDA has a brand new executive director. Uh, she and I have just uh, exchanged some friendly emails. So there's opportunities there. We actually have a formal agreement between the ACDA and the AGO, as a matter of fact, with a whole bunch of stipulations as to how we will help each other. They'll give us discounted membership dues to their conventions and we'll give them discounted dues to ours, just as an example. So we can expand on that for young organists and for new members, uh, expand on the, on the agreements that we already have in place. And it's work to be done with the Piano Teachers Association. Great question, Adam, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Um, James, I think that's it for now. So I will turn it back over to you. All right. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks for the opportunity to run through that strategic planning uh, document pretty quickly. And I, it gives me great joy to now turn the uh, floor, as it were, uh, over to uh, Joshua Freeman, our chief technology officer, to talk about our new AMS. Hi, good afternoon, everybody, or morning or evening, depending on where in the world you are. I am in a slightly noisy location in New York City, for which I apologize uh, profusely. Um, with regards to succession planning for IT, I wanted to make sure that everybody knows that uh, I have put together a great deal of documentation for the technology underpinning um, the AGO. Um, it's, a, it's a document that's both very you know, it's robust, it's secure, it's shared with James, it's shared with, we also have a third party uh, IT vendor in case something happens to me, I wanna assure everyone here that I am not a single point of, I am not the single point of failure I may seem to be. I have, I have backup. And uh, so if anything happens to me, the work continues. And, um, you know, so I just wanted to uh, make a comment there about succession planning from an IT perspective. I'm very excited to announce that after a, a long uh, period of looking at a number of potential replacements for Impact and OnCard, we have, um, decided to go uh, with a product called Tendency. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring something up on my screen now, if I may. Uh, let's see, I believe this is the window. So Tendency is an open source association management system. It's, it's top ranked association management software. There's over 1.4 million users amongst the many, many organizations and uh, What's unique about this product is that it's, it's something called open source software. And what that means is um, the, the actual source code of the application, the actual, like the application itself down to every line of code, you get to see it. It's like, you get to see it, you get to work with it. You, you don't have to hire a tendency if you wanna make customizations. Any, anyone who has the skills and the ability to manipulate and configure and customize the software for your needs, you can go with whomever. So what, what we are doing here at, at the AGO for our next generation AMS is we're engaging a software development firm um, that specializes in the technology that this product tendency is built on. And they are going to basically doing a deep dive on our AM, current AMS and understand all of the unique features that were built for us originally that we embrace and we like and are 
central to our smooth operations. And then learn a lot about all the ways in which tendency, the ways in which impact and OnCard come up short, especially for our volunteer leadership, chapter management, and uh, make sure that in our next generation AMS, it is easy to use, it is easy to manipulate, it is easy to get reporting done. All of the, the key features and functionality and benefits that um, our chapter leadership needs in order to get their work done as chapter leaders are gonna be smooth as silk. I mean, that is our goal in building this new, uh, this new platform for the AGO. And it's gonna consist of a number of different applications all working together. It's going to be this application called Tendency. It's going to be Salesforce. It's going to be something called Discourse, which is the community building aspect, the ability for, for special intergroup, interest groups to have a place online where they can discuss topics of interest to them, share files, share, you know, whether they're videos or music or, or images, share files with each other and have that all kept in a repository so new people who join the organization can go on to a discussion and look backwards in time and see where the discussion originated. So there'll be, um, oh, what else? Oh, and we're, we have other features that we're adding which have to do with um, being able to send text, mass text messages to our membership for people who opt in for such things. And we have special announcements to make and things like that. Um, I don't want to dive I have deeply. A question for right, you. Go, yeah, go right uh, ahead. I, yeah, because I think this is a good one. And uh, we're all going to be happy with your answer. Will the new website have a difference in articles available to members only as opposed to non members? Yes. In, in short, yes. We will be able to have a, a much more granular and manageable distinction between part content on the website that is public facing or perhaps membership generating you know, things that will information that will entice people to become members of our organization and and things that are restricted only to people who are already members um, yeah we will have a much better ability to um, have control of that so the answer the short answer is yes are there I mean are there I don't want to dive too deeply into the technical details although, I make I am making myself available to anyone watching this who would like to have a more deep discussion on a technical or functional level about what we're planning. You can reach out to me anytime. My information is on the website where you can reach out to Molly or Elizabeth. They'll put you in touch with me. Um, I'm happy to talk with anybody about the project. Um, what other questions are there? Well, there's one, one good one from Sue Mitchell Wallace, one of our wonderful regional counselors. Does this new technology provide for online teaching for revised exam requirements? That's a really good question because I think you and I, Elizabeth, have talked about teaching modules for doing online education, um, you know, like a learning management system. Right. I do know that that there is learning, there are learning management systems that are built on the same technology that Tenancy is built in that could that we could incorporate into this. And, I, and I'm one of the, the sub-threads of this whole project is to work with Paul, who leads all of our um, you know, uh, certification work to get as, as many aspects of the certification process automated, you know, put into the system so it's part of the overall system and not managed independently. I don't know if that's a fully performative answer to the question, but it's certainly something we're talking about. And we will, it's something that if we choose to do it and we know how we want to do it, we will be able to do it. All right, so here's one that I know we've all been waiting, our members have been waiting with bated breath to hear. Uh, what is the timeline for transitioning from on-card to tendency? I am hoping that, you know, we're just kicking off now. And what is it? It's now October, almost November. You know, I'm hoping maybe by June, July, August of two, you know, 2022 that we can maybe make a transition. I don't want to, I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. So I'm being a little cautious here. But my hope is that you know, in a six to eight month period, you know, we will be able to have people using the new system certainly in sort of a beta capacity if not 
fully engaged. And it's going to be a lot easier than on card. I'll, I'll let you all know that because I know you all love using on card. <laughs> well, I think one thing I want to add here is, you know, I, I put this, I put tenancy up here. Um, if you tenancy, unlike every other, actually, this is interesting. Unlike every other uh, AMS we looked at, tenancy provides a free online demo of their product that can be, anyone can go and play with. Uh, if you go to demo.tenancy.org, on the top of the screen here, I can share that screen with you. I have that open too. Hang on a second. Uh, is this it? Um, let's see. Um, all right, I'm going to have to do some switching around, but I, I do have it too. Hang on a second. Uh, While you do that. Um, yep, I'm going to so, do it right now. Okay. Oh, cool. There you go. Yeah, here we go. So this is, um, is, is my screen being shared now or not? Mm -hmm. uh, do you see it? Okay, I great. I see it. Hope everybody okay. else does. So, so, so if you look, this is, this is demo.tenancy.org. And if you look at the top here, each time you load this page, there's a new username and password for the admin account and a new username and password for the user account. And you get to basically log in to Tenancy our design will look very different. This is just the out of the box design. So don't get too caught up in the way it looks. But in terms of the functionality that this product has out of the box as an association management system, this will give you a taste of what's, what's in store. And uh, we will be working closely with, with our development partner as well as the people at Tenancy to make sure that our, our chapter um, features are pretty much the best, the, the, the best they can be the best that there is, because this is so eminently configurable. Um, I believe that we'll be able to deliver. Michelle Thomas, you have such a wonderful supportive comment about a tendency. Do you want to unmute yourself and share your thoughts? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, thank you, everyone. I just wanted to let you all know that as a member of the AGO Technology Committee, we have spent uh, several months uh, almost years by now, taking a look at all various platforms for the associated, the association management software. And I think Josh has done a wonderful job in making sure that we have considered all angles. And I am uh, thrilled to support him in this decision. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more questions? I can't see any. Molly, do you see any more? I don't see any. Oh, oh, wait. Uh, two years ago, many of us provided wish lists of features that we'd like to see. Have you been provided those submissions? If not, will you be asking for those again? We probably I, have a wish list somewhere. Oh, we have lots of technical documentation about what was what people were hoping to see in the in, in um uh, what was in Impexium when the guild was trying to move to Impexium. So all of that information is fairly well documented. That being said, the world is constantly changing and technology is constantly advancing. If there are, um, there's, there's no downside to repeat performance. You know, if people have things that they really want to make sure get included in, in the next AMS for the AGO, they should share that with us. They should feel encouraged to share that with us. That's great. I'm, you know, as a developer of websites I've, and databases, uh, that's the reason I asked that question because we had provided quite a bit of information. So thank you. I think that's it. I, I think that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit if I'm okay. Um, so I'm going to stop Josh's. Or is it okay if I stop your screen share? There we go. Okay. All righty. Well, I, I have an announcement to make, and I'm really thrilled about it. And I know that you all will be too, because you hear the most wonderful, joyful 
wonderfully greeting. Um, I don't know what to say. When this person answers the phone, you just feel good about how the rest of your day is going to go. And Molly Davey has been promoted to manager of member engagement and chapter support. And we are thrilled about this. She, uh, you know, she's the first thing she said to me when, when I met with her, when I joined is she said, the best part of my day is talking with our members. And uh, I know that, I know you can tell it. You, she's such a great support to all of you. And so I wanna get her a little more involved in, in helping us and supporting chapters. So she is gonna be transitioning to that. Oh, look at all the comments, yay! Wonderful, so uh, thrilled, thrilled about that. We couldn't, we couldn't ask for a better thing to celebrate today. Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, let me see if I can pull up I'm going to start with a poll here. Um, I'm going to launch a poll and let's see if I can do this uh, correctly. As we transition into me talking a little bit about a year of the young organist, or as we fondly on the back end call it yo-yo, because it's kind of long to spell out year of the young organist. Uh, I'm going to launch this poll. Do you know where the yo-yo information is located on our website? Pretty simple, it's either yes or no. <laughs> okay, it looks like, okay, it's 50-50. It's about 50-50. Well, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share, I'm gonna show it with you. Yes, choice two is no, sorry about that. I just put this poll up very quickly at the end. Choice one is, is yes. Okay, you're going back and forth. So it looks like we need to share a little bit more information about uh, those who may need to know where all of this is located. All right, so good of it. Okay, now we're gonna do, uh, yeah, so, okay. Now, let me see if I can get to the second poll. I had another poll here. Well, in any event, at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen. So we can go right to where this uh, website is located. So if you're on our homepage and you go to membership and you hit the scroll, see what I'm doing now? I've got the, this is a scroll down, drop down menu. You click on the year of the young organist and you're going to come to this page that you can see right here. And each size chapter. And as we said, we did have a question about small chapters are considered 12 and under. Um, 12, oh, excuse me, extra small are considered 12 and under. Smaller considered 12 to 60, medium 61 to 125, and large 126 plus. But anyway, what we're going to do is you have the opportunity to win $1,000, which is a nice chunk of change for, for your chapter by June 30th of 2022 by recru recruiting young organists in your area. And we've just posted uh, as we update this who's in the lead on our small chapters. As you can see, Tampa and Central North Carolina, sorry, it says North Carolina, are tied with a net growth of seven new organists. Meeting chapter, medium chapter down from Denver Rocky Hill, you're still in the lead. And Atlanta and Los Angeles are tied with a net growth of nine new young organists. And that means that these are, when we say net growth, you may have recruited seven, but if you lost three, we, we, we can't, we, we have to take that into account. So we, the point is you wanna, you wanna keep these young organists uh, as engaged as you can. So what we've tried to do each month, and we've put this in a newsletter, is give you tips. So we have uh, a letter that you can send, actually the, the first is the Year of the Young Organist page that you can send as a link now. There's also a link there located here to, that takes you directly to the year uh, of the Young Organist Free Membership where um, they can fill out a form and submit it and we'll respond immediately to them. We also have, let me see if I can share this other, other uh, form with you that I thought was kind of fun. Um, here we go. So we've created a letter that you can send out. We, this is really, we hope that you will send this out um, to your colleagues, you want your, we want your students to know about this. We've actually created an organ scholar program that's gonna give two young people an opportunity 
to experience a one-year internship uh, in a gap year. So we'll have one in 22-23 and one person in 23-24. And it's going to pro provide $30,000 in salary as well as housing and health care for the Oregon Scholar. And we have a couple of large chapters that are not necessarily large, but chapters that are, have been interested in participating in this. But here's the fun thing. So now you, we, we know that young people love the QR codes. So you've got a QR code here that you can share, um, just send out uh, to people that you think are gonna be interested. We've sent this, we have a list of all of our conservatories and colleges with music departments, and universities with music departments on our website. And I have sent this out to them and I will also be following up again because I wanna make sure that they're aware of this. And then what we just put up for, for November is, we're getting ahead of the holidays here, but I wanted you to see this. So this is a give the gift of free membership within the American Guild of Organists. So this is a lovely page that you can use. For those of you that are having programs, you can print this out and hand this out to people or you can email it and it's got, it's linked to the free membership and the QR code right there. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing. So you know where this all is now, it's under, it's under membership. And uh, just to give a little plug once again, I'm gonna go back here because in addition to, oh, sorry about that. Okay, I've gone to the wrong one. I'm getting too, I'm getting too fancy with all this screen sharing. Anyway, if you look under the membership tab, in addition to the recruitment toolkit, there are all of the chapter leadership toolkits there for you. Um, to date, and this is pretty exciting. So we launched this program, what, July 1st? To date, we have 412 new young organist members, which um, I, I applaud you because I know you've done a lot of this recruitment. Keep it up. Thank you, Zap Boyer, who said, awesome, amazing. Yes, it is amazing. So my goal is by June 30th of 2022, we've got at least a thousand new young organist members. So now I want to, I want to ask you, once you've got these members now, what are you doing to engage them? So who would like to answer that question? I'm going to open the chat box here. Tell me what you're doing. Elizabeth, while you're getting some people answering in the chat, mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if I could just share my screen for sure. a quick moment, yep. please. And let's see if we go to the home page. Yeah, you know, the home home page of the uh, of the uh, website. Normally, it starts here with TAO, but it's it's in the scroll. You always get to the year of the young organist, and if you click on the year of the young organist, it gets to a blog post where people can post things. But click here for more information, and this is the form where people who want to join as a young organist can get their free membership right here. Thank so you. it's really. Yeah, it's just two clicks away from the home page, and I just wanted everyone to see that home page, and then click on that where it says "click here" on the in the uh, prior item. And James, and show them while you're there. Please show them the uh, if click here for more information because the Year of the Young Organist has their own website, right? right. So the Year exactly right. So the AGO Young Organists created their own website for the Year of the Young Organists. If you click here on Get Your Free Membership, guess where you'll go? You'll go right back to the AGO website. See, I just clicked on it. Uh, let's go back to the year of the young organist. This is the program year. So this describes all the programs that the young organists have put together. And here's what's coming up. So, right, we've got Dr. Richard Zielinski coming up in November, and we've got Joel Vitacco coming up. So these programs are coming up, uh, coming up ahead of us. And, and so, yes, there are different aspects of the uh, AGO young organist that can be seen in different places. Susan Legrand, I think, made that point. Uh, in the chat that you get to see different things depending on where you go. So go back to free membership. And somebody else asked the question, by the way, is there only one organ scholar for 2023 20, and 2024? Yes, each year there's only one organ scholar. Uh, that is a highly competitive uh, uh, program. And Duke University is going to be doing the first uh, organ scholar. Um, uh, they will be the host of the first organ scholar. So the Duke is going to be working with um, the chapter, the host chapter, I'm 
did, don't recall which one it is, but it must be the local chapter for Duke in determining exactly what the um, application process will be to find the organ scholar for the year uh, in connection with Duke University, maybe it's Duke University Chapel. I just saw that come by my email and I read it really quickly. So I'm sorry, I'm, it's breaking news, but I don't have the details because I read it too quickly. Okay, anyway, we're gonna go back to hearing about what some of our chapters are doing. Ed, do you Please. want to unmute yourself to share a little bit about what your chapter's doing? If not, yeah, there he is. Uh, so you have the ability to unmute yourself, Ed. And it's up in the right hand corner if you put your cursor up in the right hand corner. Thank you very much. I'm I'm very happy for you to to, to uh, read what we were talking about, and I think it's going to generate a lot of interest in our yo-yo uh, members. And I like that Monica. Tell tell me what you're doing though, you because you you posted something good about what your chapter's doing. We're having a meet and greet for our new members under 30, just introducing them to some of the leadership and showing them opportunities before them as a member of the AGO, talking about a sub list that we uh, subscribe to that they're able to put their names on and just getting a face-to-face -face meeting with our leadership, with some of the younger members ourselves. Excellent. Excellent. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Lynn has a good question, Lynn Francisco. Uh, if a young organist signs up for free membership in mid-June of 2022, does that person still get a free year of membership? Hi, Lynn. Yes, you. they do until June 30th. Okay. Oh, until June 30th of the next year, 2023. Of 2022. Yep. Yep. Oh, oh wait a minute. So, uh, Okay, I, I'm sorry, I'm still a little confused. So if they sign up for free membership starting like say mid-June, June 15, 2022, so the free membership lasts only until the 30th of, 20, no, 2023. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah, because this, this came up and we were like, I have no idea how to answer that question. So you just answered it for me. Thank you so much, much well, appreciated. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I, I just want to thank some of you. I know many of you have been in your chapter leader, your newsletters, um, been acknowledging new members, doing profiles on them. Um, I know many of you have recitals planned. Uh, so it's, you know, you've got to keep them. That's the thing. You've got to keep them engaged, get them, you know, recognize them. They can never be acknowledged too much, make them feel welcomed. I started thinking about, I was racking my brain in the middle of the night, about what tip I was gonna come up with for December. And we've talked a lot about uh, ambassador programs. So maybe you create a buddy program where you pair um, a member who's been a member of your chapter for a while with a young organist. And if you're meeting in person, you know, say, I'd love to meet you at, uh, at the venue and introduce you to some people. And if you're still meeting virtually, you can still connect with this person and ask how they're doing, remind them about upcoming programs that you may be doing virtually, uh, webinars that are, we're being presented on our website. So um, I think I'm gonna make that my tip for December. Um, I'm trying to see, Molly, do we have any more? I'm trying to see what else. Um, what is here? Questions from anybody else doing anything? Uh, we are thrilled that young organists can have dual memberships with several chapters. Yes, that's why uh, when Agoya, when our committee was putting this together, they wanted to make sure that not only could they have a primary chapter membership, but they could have, I believe, Molly, three additional memberships. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, Rick Burke, um, do you want to unmute yourself so that you can share what you're doing and, and tell, uh, start by uh, introducing who you are in your chapter? You can unmute yourself on the, uh, there you go. Uh, sorry, I thought I had hit it. <laughs> I'm Rick Burke, the Dean of the St. Louis chapter. Uh, one thing we are in the process of organizing, putting together is to try to have a recital uh, played by some of the or young organists who have joined our chapter uh, this coming March. Um, also wanting to organize a 
primarily a social gathering uh, of, of the young organists, uh, members of our chapter, but with some of the uh, chapter leadership as well, so we can get to know them, but that they primarily can get to know one another. Um, and we've had several uh, of our members retire uh, in the last six months or so, and they've donated boxes of music um, to be given away. And so my thought was to make that primarily available to these young organists. Um, they can start to build up their collection of music without with very little cost to them. That's wonderful. That's a great idea. And, you know, I talk a lot about collaboration, so I'm just going to Zach Boyer put in the chat, Ed, if you ever would like to partner with the, Char the Charlotte chapter in any events, we would be open to it. So I think as much collaboration as you all can do is great. Uh, Jane, do you, Jane Ott, can you want to unmute yourself and, and share what, you, what you're doing for your Halloween concert? Yeah, we're partnering with the local university and it's going to be a big, hopefully a big public Halloween uh, concert and our scholarship winner who's 15 years old will be playing the final piece because he's so good and we're gonna have fun stuff I'm gonna play Adam's family and get all everybody's getting all dressed up uh, so I think the other appeal is that we have some musicians from the university so then they'll have their folks attend I think it's a wonderful partnership I'm I've got great hopes for it this Friday thank you that's great. Well, I'm going to expect some photos so that we can put them in the newsletter. Of course. In our December newsletter, because November is just about uh, ready to go out. And I know that um, Columbus, Ohio, we're having a student recital in February of 2022. Awesome. This is great. DC chapter. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Who do we have on here? Adam, talk about what DC chapter is doing. All right. So um, DC Chapter actually has two different programs. One um, is our monthly Studio 32, and we get together each month. Um, of course, we have the whole year planned out in advance, but um, each month we go to a different installation and everybody gets to learn about the different instrument, but we also... Um, get to connect with one another. We have music from our archives that are brought out so people can pick up music for free. Um, and then we go out for coffee or drinks afterwards at um, whatever establishment is close. Um, and that we've had a really big focus on diversity of instruments. So we have some digital instruments on that list. We have hybrid, we have um, a school organ as well and we also have one at a um at another theater location that usually we don't get um public access to so we've got a bunch of hidden gems in the area that we're visiting on that and then um we have also gotten together and um had lunch with the dean um, which is a separate thing on our Friday concerts at the uh, National City Christian Church. And that's more geared towards our older membership. So we're taking care of both the younger and the older demographics. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Stephen Allen, this is fun. Share, if you want to come on and unmute yourself, um, share what Tampa is doing in March. And if not, I can I can certainly read it. Sorry, um, Elizabeth, who who was that? And I'll give them the ability to un. Stephen Allen. Okay. Well, I'll read it. Tampa Young Organists will play in a Bach Bash program in March 2022. That's awesome. That's great. Well, it's wonderful to see. And thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Bailey, Nassau and Suffolk chapters are collaborating on a series of sessions that cover the Achievement Awards this year. And that is so wonderful. Elizabeth, do you want to unmute yourself and talk a little bit about that? Oh, okay, <clears throat> am I unmuted now? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, so um, several members of the chapters have either volunteered or been shanghaied into providing these sessions. Um, we had 15 people 
ranging in age from high school up through in their 70s. Although this is, we set these up for the young organist program, but anybody can come. So for example, uh, yesterday we had 15 people show up at, with ages ranging from high school through in their 70s um, to hear a session about what are the families of pipes? Uh, um, how would you register this page? Se effectively a session on registration. So we have sessions set up for uh, registration, transposition, harmony, and uh, one other group. I forget what the, uh, what the other achievement award is. Um, anyway, uh, throughout this winter and spring. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Elizabeth. Um, I had the pleasure of being on a, a Great Lakes Dean's meeting uh, with Karen Farmer. Uh, I've done a lot of these throughout October. Molly was on one. And um, Jamie Greenwald, who is the Dean of the Springfield chapter, um, said that he, they have now have a 17-year-old young organist who has just completed and gotten his service playing certificate which is pretty amazing for 17 years old. So uh, it's just wonderful to hear these, these, uh, these things that you are doing. Keep doing them, keep engaging them, keep acknowledging them. Um, really, uh, it, we are relying so much on you uh, to, to really make this program as successful as, uh, as possible. Um, I'm trying to 60th anniversary. Oh, Mary Eileen from Southeastern Pennsylvania, would you like to share what you're doing? Of course you would. Can you unmute? There she is. Of course I would. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, you heard a lot about it, about it during our summer meeting, uh, leadership meeting. But at this point, uh, from May, uh, to kick off the Year of the Young Organist, we uh, we had uh, one of my go to young organists, Dylan David Shaw, and he gave a full concert and it was like a reunion. Uh, hopefully you'll hear more about that as uh, the season continues and the session. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, my my four year old just approached me now. He's been good for an hour and a half. Um, so we have um, say, say hi, Ben. No, he's muting himself. Um, <laughs> Okay, so we continued that um, as December coming up uh, as a reprise on the mandolin and organ concert from last year with Aaron Patterson of Curtis Institute. He'll be performing uh, on organ with the mandolinist and he's going to return with his mother on harp. And I understand she has a very good reputation for her harp playing and they're going to give a full concert and they're all at the same place at St. Coleman Church in Lower Murray in Pennsylvania. Um, I call it the lofty place on the main line. Um, and Sunday, you're doing something Sunday after Thanksgiving, which I love as yeah, well, are you not? It, it's kind of a, a tribute to the yo-yos, uh, but it's our 60th anniversary for Southeastern Pennsylvania. I'm the dean, and um, that's our uh, our big uh, potluck dinner for everyone. We're going to encourage the youth as well as the older, and as many as we can have attend that potluck dinner. It'll be fun. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. So uh, cute, cute story, and I'll be very brief because we've gone <laughs> over, but it's so great to, to see the engagement here. We received a couple of months ago a wonderful um, form from uh, someone who was very, very young. We looked at the date of birth and uh, Molly and I were going, no, that can't be right. That can't be right. And uh, he was very sweet. I sent him an email back saying I was four years old. And I said, you know, we so appreciate your enthusiasm <laughs> uh, about the organ. Uh, keep at it. We hope that we can welcome you in the future. And that was Mary Eileen's grandson. So we had a good laugh over that. And, uh, you know, maybe we need to start them younger than we thought. But anyway, um, I just want to share that with everyone. Um, I, I'm looking through, it looks like, you know, we're, you, a lot of you are doing the same thing, a lot of partnerships, which is just great. Uh, Fairfield West has a student recital on no November 19th. That's wonderful. That's Stanford, Connecticut. And oh, great. 
Uh, David Nichols, thank you. We're giving scholarships for shoes, music, and or lessons. And our used music exchange is very popular with young organists. That's great. That's wonderful. You all are, are you all are doing such wonderful things. I, I really, we can't thank you enough. And um, we've gone 10 minutes over our, our town hall for uh, 2021, but my goal is to do this, these quarterly. I think it's really important that we stay connected. And we're gonna be using some new software that is going to enable you to uh, look at a table seating and it'll have a topic that you might wanna share with someone. You're gonna be able to pick a chair, sit down and be able to see the other person and have discussions. So this is new software that's, that's coming and I'm not gonna say any more about it. I think James is in support of it, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna share the name yet. But before we leave, I just wanna promote a couple of upcoming uh, leadership webinars that I think are really important. And this one particularly on November 1st, uh, Sue Mitchell Wallace and Wayne Wold, our regional counselors, along with uh, Joyce Gerstenlauer, who is a district convener, are going to be doing a webinar and Wayne came up with this title and I love it, how to be a board without being bored. And this is actually launching a new publication that we will be providing to chapter leaders, which is called the board team handbook. It has nothing to do with the AGO handbook. This is a handbook that talks about how you can work successfully as a team, how to resolve conflict and resolution and be as productive as you can. So this is, they're gonna be launching this publication, uh, just an overview of it on November 1st. And you can sign up uh, on our website. I'm gonna be sending out a, an email, a reminder tomorrow. And then on November 15th, um, uh, the Committee on Membership Development and Chapter Support is doing a webinar on um, chapter nominating committee. Have you formed this yet? So this is really the importance of starting to think about your nominations your committee, your procedures now, don't wait until January to do this. And save the date, you won't remember this, but it's gonna be up on our website soon. We are going to do another virtual leadership conference two nights this, this time, January 23rd and 24th. And we'll be using that new wonderful software that will be so much easier and collaborative. Nobody will get kicked out of a breakout room. No more 17 concurrent Zoom breakout rooms that I think gave Molly and Leah and I a lot of gray hairs last year. So we're excited about that. And we'll have that registration up on the website shortly. Um, so I just wanna thank you all so very much. You are the AGO. Without you, we wouldn't be here. So. Uh, Thank you so very much. James, any last words? I will echo your comments, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of the leadership of the AGO uh, and for sharing so openly and generously all of the terrific ideas in the chat uh, about what you're all doing. It's fantastic ideas and, and giving us a lot of good ideas of what we can do better uh, to improve our relationships with other organizations and, and reach out to bring in more new members. So thank you very much. Great to have you all here. And congratulations to Molly and Elizabeth on your promotions. And here's to the new membership software. Woo! I mean, we're we're dancing. We are dan we're virtually dancing around our own respective offices. So with that, we'll just say thank you, everybody. Stay well, be well, and uh, this recording will be up on the website tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>